Hi judges, welcome to another segment of Juan Arliwag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. For today, we will be discussing the last type of conic section. We're done discussing the first type, which is the circle. The second one, which is the parabola. The third one, which is an ellipse. And for today, we'll now be dealing with the last type of conic section. And the last type of conic section is what we have now as hyperbola. So what is hyperbola? Hyperbola is the locus of all points in the plane wherein the absolute difference of whose distances from two fixed points, F1 and F2, is a constant. So to illustrate, I have here the hyperbola. And from the hyperbola, we have the foci, F1 and F2. So from the foci, I have a point on the hyperbola, and we call that point P. So from P to F1, that is the line segment PF1. From P to F2, that is the line segment PF2. So based on the definition, it is the locus of all points in the plane wherein the absolute difference of whose distances from two fixed points, F1 and F2, is a constant. Therefore, in writing an equation, this is the equation. The absolute value or the absolute difference of whose distances from two fixed points, F and F1, is a constant. And just like an ellipse, that constant is equal to 2a. Okay? So that is the definition of our hyperbola. Let's now move on to the different parts of the hyperbola. For the hyperbola, we have two axes. Just like an ellipse wherein we have the major and the minor axis, in hyperbola, we will not anymore be calling it as major and minor. We'll be calling it as transverse and conjugate. Again, when we say major axis in hyperbola, we call this as transverse axis and the minor axis as conjugate axis. So, in ellipse, we'll be calling that as MHA and MVA. But in hyperbola, we'll be calling this as tax and tie. When we say tax, transverse axis X. And when we say tie, transverse axis Y. Or transverse axis horizontal, transverse axis vertical. So this is the definition or these are the parts of the hyperbola. Again, we have two axes the transverse axis and the conjugate axis for the transverse axis okay that is the major axis so in transverse axis we will be seeing the foci and the vertices on the transverse axis while in the conjugate axis we'll be just seeing co-vertices actually there is no co-vertices in hyperbola but I'd like to write or I'd like to put the coordinates of the co-vertices so that I will not be confused whenever I am drawing the auxiliary rectangle. Okay, so these are the parts of the hyperbola. We have the foci, we have the vertices, we have the co-vertices, so I'll be having W1 and W2, just like an ellipse, from the center going to any point of the vertices that is A. Therefore, the length of the transverse axis is 2a because a plus a is 2a. And from the center, going to any point of the foci, that is c. This is also c. And from the center, going to any point of the co-vertices, that is b. So based on this figure, we could say that c is the largest among the three variable again c is the largest among the three variable we have the variables a b and c for the ellipse a is the largest but for the hyperbola c will now be the largest so we'll now be having an equation c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared therefore a squared now is equal to c squared minus b squared. And that b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. So this will now be the working equation in which we could get the values of a, b, and c. Okay? Unlike for the ellipse that a is the largest, so we have used the triangle inequality for that one. 
Okay, so these are the parts, the foci, the vertices, and the covertices. I know that you are very familiar with those given coordinates. But then, in hyperbola, we have another parts, unlike for the ellipse, that it is just the center, the foci, the, co the covertices, and the vertices. For the ellipse, we'll be having the asymptotes. Okay, so these are the asymptotes. Okay, so these are the asymptotes. And how do we get the asymptotes? Okay, by using the auxiliary rectangle. So we'll be calling this as the auxiliary rectangle. This is auxiliary rectangle. And how do we get the auxiliary rectangle? From the vertices going to the points of the covertices, just draw a line or just like this one. Therefore, we'll be calling that as the auxiliary rectangle. And how do we now solve for the asymptotes? Remember that from those from this auxiliary rectangle, the or the diagonals of the rectangle will serve as the asymptotes. And the intersection of the asymptotes will be our center. Again, the intersection of the asymptotes will be our center. For this example, we could say that this is transverse axis X. Why? This example is transverse axis X. Since we could find the foci and the vertices on the X axis. Okay? We'll now be ready to graph. We're now ready to graph the Hyperbola. Remember that asymptotes are guide. Our hyperbola will get closer and closer to the asymptotes, but they will never ever meet at any point. So let us try to graph from the vertices, just like this one. From the vertices, it will not touch the asymptote. From the vertices, it will not touch the asymptotes. From the vertices, it will not it will not touch the asymptote. So this is our hyperbola with transverse axis in the horizontal. What if we now have the parabola with transverse axis? Y or tai. Okay. So if we have transverse axis y, therefore we could now find the um, the foci, the vertices. And the y-axis. Okay, so this is an example. This, therefore, this will be w1 and this is w2. And since we now have the auxiliary rectangle, I could now draw the asymptote. Okay, this is our asymptotes. Again, we could only draw the asymptotes if we have the auxiliary rectangle. And remember that the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle, the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle is just equal to 2a by 2b. Why? Because this is our a, 2a, and this is our b, which is 2b. So that is the dimension of the auxiliary rectangle. So based from this graph, therefore, our hyperbola now is opening upward and downward. Okay, so these are the parts and the definition of hyperbola. So what if you are now asked to get the length of the transverse axis? When we say length of the transverse axis, therefore, that is just equal to 2a. So what if you're asked to find the length of the conjugate axis? When we say length of the conjugate axis, therefore, we are just dealing with 2b. And when you are asked to get the length of the foci, therefore, we'll, uh, we are just dealing with 2c. Okay? So, again, the length of the transverse axis is 2a. The length of the conjugate axis is 2b. The length of the foci is 2c. If you have comments, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, do not forget or do not hesitate to message me on Facebook on Twitter and on my Instagram. I have also uh, I also have my DepEd account written on the description box. Once again, I am Engineer Jad Edward Hernandez 
and saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.